Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, I want to talk about the biggest misconceptions of tourniquets. The first one I want to talk about is using tourniquets as a last resort. Now, I've been in EMS for, gosh, coming on 14 years now. And when I first got into EMS, it was. You used a tourniquet was your last resort. You applied direct pressure, you elevated, you used pressure points, all of these things before you ultimately decided to use a tourniquet. Now, the national standard is to apply direct pressure, hard, firm pressure, and if you can't get that bleeding to stop, you put a tourniquet on it and you move on. So this is kind of a new standard that a lot of people, if they've been out of the medical field for a while, they haven't taken a class for a while, still believe that putting a tourniquet on is the last resort. Now it's pretty much, like I said, direct pressure. If you can't get firm direct pressure to stop bleeding, you put a tourniquet on it. This is for extremities, arms and legs. Then you put a tourniquet on it. This allows you to move on to other systems that may be having problems or other patients. Another misconception that people often have is that if you put a tourniquet on a person's arm or leg, they're automatically going to lose the arm or leg. So they're scared to put the tourniquet on. Just because I apply a tourniquet to this arm and I get it tight doesn't mean that I'm going to automatically lose it. Now is it in danger? Absolutely. But you're putting this on because you have bright red blood squirting and you're afraid the patient's going to bleed out. So I would rather save my life and go to my little girl's wedding or go to my little boy's wedding and see my little kids graduate college with one arm than to lose my life because someone was afraid to put a tourniquet on or because I was afraid to put a tourniquet on myself. So just because you put a tourniquet on does not mean that you're going to automatically lose that arm. Now the longer the tourniquet is on your arm, yes, you have increased risk of blood clots and losing that arm because of all this dead tissue because it's no longer getting blood flow, it's no longer getting oxygen, so this arm may die the longer the tourniquet is applied. But we can put tourniquet on for several hours and zero problems. I have personally put tourniquets on people and they didn't lose an arm, so it does work. Just know why we're putting this on. So the next two I'm going to address, we'll kind of combine those into one, is I see that people say, I'm not going to buy a tourniquet, I'm not going to put a tourniquet in my EDC because I'm just going to use a belt or some 550 cord. Now granted, I have seen people put belts, take their belts off, really wrench them down on a leg and try to get bleeding controlled. And I'm not saying that it's impossible to get bleeding completely stopped, especially on a leg, using a belt or 550 cord. I'm just telling you that it's very difficult especially with the 550 cord. The narrower the tourniquet, the harder it is and the more pressure it's going to take. So the wider the tourniquet, actually the less pressure it takes and a little bit easier to do that. So using a belt and 550 cord is not my first choice of a tourniquet. So that's going to lead me right into my next section, which is that improvised tourniquets are proper medical equipment. And the answer is no. These do not work as well as tourniquets. The ones that are designed commercially grade, they're designed to be tourniquets. In a bad situation, would I use a triangle bandage to try to make a tourniquet? Absolutely. In a bad situation, would I use a blood pressure cuff to try to make a tourniquet? Absolutely. But this would not be my first choice. If I had the choice, I would put a tourniquet on your arm or your leg if you had major bleeding there again. But if this is all I had, yes, I would do that. If this is all I had, I would make a tourniquet out of this. I've done a video on how to make a tourniquet out of this. So that's what I would do if that's all that I had on me. All that I had on me was my belt and you're spreading bright red blood out of your femoral artery. I'm going to put a knee to your groin, which is right where your femoral artery is at. And I'm going to tighten that belt down as tight as I can get it to try to make a tourniquet. But that's not proper. My first choice would be to put a tourniquet on you, such as the cat, a soft tea, or something like that. And while we're on the subject of improvised tourniquets, I like the Israeli bandage. It's probably one of my favorite bandages. I can do a lot with this. And yes, you can make a tourniquet out of this because you can run your arm through this right here, little section, and I can start wrapping this around. And then when I get done, let's lock it in real quick. I can do it real quick on video. Sorry, just real fast. So now, this is just a pressure bandage, but if I take this plastic clip here, spin it in, and start rotating, I have now make, making a tourniquet. Is this improvised medicine? Absolutely, because this may be the only bandage I have because 
skinny medic told you to buy an Israeli bandage. But this is not a first choice, first line, first line of defense for a tourniquet. But if this is all I had, absolutely, I would use an Israeli bandage. You should all own an Israeli bandage, by the way. So every time I talk about a tourniquet, someone comments down there and says, I love the soft T. I love the SWAT tourniquet. I love the TK4. I love the cat. Everybody has their preference, okay? If I say the rats is the best tourniquet on the market, you guys are gonna be like, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna nail me. If I say the cat tourniquet is the best tourniquet on the market, you guys are gonna nail me. You're gonna tell me and say, I had one break. I had, I've seen them break. I've done this. The soft tea, if I say it's the best tourniquet, you're like, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a cat guy. I, I've used a cat in the field. So there is no perfect tourniquet on the market. If I could make the perfect tourniquet, man, it'd be fantastic. I'd be somewhere on a beach. So, but there is no perfect tourniquet on the market. They all have their issues, okay? The soft tea has its issues. The SWAT tourniquet has its issues. The cat has its issues. The TK4 has its issues. The rat's tourniquet has its issues. They all have their issues. They all have their benefits, but they also have their issues. There is no perfect tourniquet on the market. The thing that I hear is I don't need to train with a tourniquet. It's time to happen, I'll just put it on, no big deal. Tourniquets are proper equipment, okay? We've already discussed that. But they take training. It doesn't matter which tourniquet you decide to carry, whether it's the, the cat, the rats, the soft tee, the SWAT tourniquet, whatever. It takes training, just like your firearm, okay? You don't just hopefully get your concealed weapon, stick in a holster, stick in your belt, and never take a training class. You should, just like anything else. The tourniquet takes training, it takes practice. Because when you are under stress and your heart rate goes from about 80 to 150, you're breathing about 30 times a minute and you're shaking because your adrenaline's pumping so much, your fine motor skills will fail you. Just like with a firearm, you draw your pistol, your fine motor skills will go. Your vision goes, everything will go under stress. So it's the same thing if you went to put a tourniquet on. So the last thing I want to talk about is I hear guys that say, I'm going to put the tourniquet on and I'm going to get back into the fight. It happens, okay? There's some superb guys out there that just, their adrenaline's pumping. They take a round to the arm and they're like, screw that. They wrap the tourniquet on and they wrap it on. And then they go back to shoot the bad guys. Boom, 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 boom. It happens. But for the average person, the moment you put this tourniquet on, you're probably out of the fight. Now, hopefully you can get back in the fight. That's what we teach police officers is why they're carrying the tourniquet. Because you put the tourniquet on, you took a round to the arm or to the leg, you put the tourniquet on, and one, you're able to defend your position that you've gotten cover, or you get back in the fight and you go kill the bad guy. But for the average civilian, this is going to be tough. I've had tourniquets locked down on me. They hurt. Okay? People don't really realize that, that these tourniquets hurt really bad because you're compressing nerves, you're compressing muscle, you're compressing blood flow, you're stopping blood flow past the tourniquet. They hurt. When I had the cat tourniquet locked down on my leg, my leg instantly went numb, I had no movement in the leg, and I couldn't put any pressure on that leg because all the nerve endings are collapsed as well. So I was barely able to stand up because I'm bouncing on one leg now, and my right leg is completely numb and gone. I'm not saying I couldn't get back in the fight, but it's something that you've got to recognize is that these tourniquets hurt when you put them on. I've talked to guys who've had complete amputations of their leg and a tourniquet was applied. And they've said that the tourniquet hurt worse than the complete amputation. There again, they were able to tell me that, so they survived the injury. They didn't bleed out on the field. But just how painful these tourniquets are is something that's often overlooked. And I don't think people quite realize that is that these really hurt. So, yes, you are meant to put the tourniquet on and get back in the fight. And a warrior will get back into the fight. The average citizen may not get back into the fight after having a tourniquet applied. So thank you guys for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember to do the right gear and the right training. And don't forget, if you're looking for a way to support this channel, go to shop.skinnymedic.com. Look at our first aid supplies, our trauma supplies, and our pre-made kits ready to go for you.